hello everyone welcome back to my channel and uh, in my last video that I posted I received a comment around uh, someone had confusions uh, about GUI and CLI and Ubuntu so I thought of coming up with a with a video to clarify that all right so let's start the video first I will start with the very basics of Linux so that you can understand uh, the difference between GUI and CLI. Okay, so I've come up with a small document that I'm going to share as well. I mean, whatever documents I'm going to present in my videos, I'm going to share it all. Okay, all right, so let's start. So Linux operating system. First, first thing is we should understand what Linux is. Okay, so Linux is an operating system just like you have Windows. All right, we have Linux operating system and the main component or the core component of Linux operating system is its kernel. Okay, so why it's the main component because it works as an interface between your hardware and your applications or the processes. Okay, so if you have to work on a Linux machine, this kernel has to be there so that you, your applications can interact with your hardware and can perform operations whatever you want to perform okay next uh, so Linux is just a kernel uh, based operating system but it has many flavors okay flavors means there there are different kinds of Linux operating systems around around the world uh, that are used for different purposes okay so if, if we talk about the the different uh, flavors of Linux operating system the most used or the most uh, common ones are Ubuntu, Red Hat, Fedora, Debian, and there are some others as well like Kali, Raspberry, and there are some more, okay? Because, <clears throat> and then this uh, Suze is, is also there. So, so these are different flavors of Linux operating system, but they all have one thing common that is kernel, okay? So how, these operating systems are different from each other they have this common kernel and just above that there's some a custom software okay that is installed and that makes it different from each other so i mean ubuntu will have some some different libraries okay then red hat or or some different uh, software packages from other operating systems okay so ubuntu red hat fedora debian kali and so on they all have this same uh, kernel and then on top of it they have some customized softwares or packages that makes them different from each other okay so this is the difference uh, uh, between uh, these these uh, different operating systems so just remember that now let's talk about GUI and CLI GUI which stands for graphical user interface or CLI it stands for command line interface it's, it's it is just a way to access a machine okay so all these different linux operating systems can have gui or cli okay so gui or cli is, is, is just a way to access a machine so uh, and uh, I mean, you can install a gui on any of these if you want to okay similarly if you want to uh, i mean have a cli so you can have it on all these these uh, different linux operating systems just remember this okay so i just want to uh, clarify this in this video, I am going to show you how you can create a GUI on top of Ubuntu. Okay, uh, so so let's start that as well. So so I'm I'm logged into my AWS Management Console and I'm on the default dashboard screen. Now I'm going to navigate to EC2 and then I'm going to just scroll down to launch an instance. So I think I already showed this in my last video also, but uh, since we are trying to provision a new uh, uh, operating system based EC2 instance, so I thought of just I'm showing it to you. So let's write this as Ubuntu GUI, okay? The name of the instance, then here, from here I can choose Ubuntu, okay? From the quick start AMIs, so I'll scroll down and you can see the version Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS and this is the most uh, 
recent one that is being used by the corporates right now if if you want to use ubuntu then you have to choose 22.04 lts as of now okay but in, in future this version will change okay then we don't have to change anything here we will keep it as t2.micro maybe i'll change it to t3.micro let's just keep it either micro no no worries okay let's let's keep it free tier only for now i think t3 dot micro is not free tier no it's not okay so we'll use t2 dot micro so that we don't come out of free tier segment next i'll use a key i already have a key here if you don't have just create just click on this this button and you can create your own uh such key pair Okay, so I'm using the one that I already have. Then I'm not going to change anything in the network settings. I'm going to use the default ones. Okay, no need to change anything here. Here I would like to increase this space to 15. And uh, let's keep it default, everything default. No need to do anything here and click on launch instance. Okay, so we have an instance ID. Just click on it and it's going to redirect you to the instance. Okay, so it's going to take some time here uh, to come up. So, uh, since this instance is still coming up, let's talk about a few more things then. So, what I've done is uh, to uh, demo this how to get GUI on top of an Ubuntu server. What I've done is I've created one small document, okay? And these are the commands that we are going to run to create that GUI for us, okay? So here, if you see, there are some commands that you will think, okay, what is this? It's, it's, it's very complex, okay? No need to go into too many details right now, okay? All these, I'll try to cover uh, I mean, whatever is, is given in this document as part of our uh, Linux learning later, okay? So don't worry about anything, just you have to copy and paste the commands and execute so here if you see all the all all the commands are in italic only okay so just copy the the stuff which is in italic font like this okay similarly this is the command and then this is the command this is the command this is the command and so on okay so all these commands you have to run on top of an ubuntu server which is only cli okay so here i what i what i'm trying to do is I'm trying to create one Ubuntu CLI server and then I'm going to uh, run some commands to enable it for GUI okay so let's just see if we are if we can actually log into this so I'll click on the instance ID I'll click on connect I'll click on SH client which is already chosen and I'm going to choose the example command I'm going to open my mobile X term local terminal i'm going to paste the command hit enter okay i think the instance is still coming up it's not ready yet i'll go back here sometimes because of these status checks it takes a little bit longer for the instance to be in ready status so that we can use it okay it's just up now so let's just click on yes on this one and hit enter so if you see here by default i get a cli screen when i log in okay i used this key pair okay uh and i'm i'm logging in as ubuntu user okay ubuntu user and this is the host name the public hostname of the instance that I'm using. Okay. And uh, so when I SSH to this machine by default, I get a CLI screen. So this is the default behavior of this uh, machine that, that I'm using. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to follow all, all the commands given in the document to, to make it as GUI. So let's do that. So first thing is you have to become root user. Okay. So right now I'm logged in as Ubuntu regular user. So I have to become root here. So I'll do sudo or super user do the the full form of sudo is super user do uh, in, in short we can say sudo 
space su space hyphen enter and i'm logged in as root user now okay now let's run all these commands one by one so apt update hyphen y apt space update space hyphen y enter Okay, so it's going to update the package index. Okay, I'm going to come to these things later. All right, let's then we have to upgrade the instance using apt upgrade space hyphen y enter. So it's going to uh, upgrade our instance to the newer version of I mean, uh, whatever updates are available on the instance, it will be applied using this command. Then just run this command so it, it, it is a setting to enable uh, a password based authentication in ssh okay so but let's not worry about this command i know this looks a bit complex but it is not actually So let it finish 97%. Okay. Uh, so whenever you, you get any any of these prompts, just hit enter. Okay. Just hit enter. Enter. Okay, done. So, next, so let's run our next command, which is this one. The next it says uh, we have to create a user, okay, using add user command. So we can choose any any username of our choice. So let's do add user space go user, okay, and then it's going to prompt us for a password. So choose a password. name you can write to user and then all the things uh, you can just leave default okay, just hit just keep hitting enter till you get your prompt back type y to confirm enter right next is uh, command is next command is i'll just clear the screen b i s u d o enter then it says you have to make an entry in the file similar to this Okay, so you have to scroll to this section in the file. Okay, so just scroll down, uh, scroll using the down arrow key on your keyboard. Scroll a bit and uh, you will see this section. Okay, this one, user privilege specification, user privilege specification. Here you have to just add that user here. So I'll just write, type GUI user then space one space then all i'll just copy the things which are written on the line above it all space okay i'm not explaining these things as of now i i just wanted to uh show you how you can enable gui on ubuntu okay so that's the only motive of this of this uh, video okay so all the things that we're doing i'm trying i'll try to cover everything in our linux learning all right so after this you have to so to save your changes you have to type control o on on your keyboard okay when you are here so type control o and enter control o enter and then control x to come out of it so whatever uh, uh, whatever changes you made uh, they have been saved next is you have to install this you have to install these different uh, packages that are required by your 
instance to enable GUI. Just copy and paste the command as it is. And then just copy the next. Okay. Uh, so this command is uh, not mandatory, but if you want to change the host name of your machine, you can run it. Okay. Anyways, we'll run it because it's given in the document. I'll just change it to host GUI. Okay, so it's going to take a while because it's trying to install all the packages and its dependencies that are required by the packages. And it's going to take some uh, storage as well on your EC, on your EC2 instance. So this is a command uh, that we act actually use in real time in, in production environments to uh, change host name. On, on on machines okay and then you have to restart this service on your machine uh, to uh, apply those changes okay we are almost there 90 percent Right, let's copy the command. I'm not sure if I copied, so I'll copy again. All right, you have to hit enter whenever you see any prompt like that. And okay, okay. All right, now next one, next command. Enter and uh, re and run the next command to apply the changes. Then you have to log out and log back in as root as you as root user. Okay, once again you do the same thing. So to to uh, log out by uh, using the shortcut key on your keyboard, just type Control D. So you are logged out as root user, but you were or, or but you were logged in as Ubuntu user as well. So just type Control D once again. So you are logged out now. And then to log back in, just hit the up arrow key which will show you the last command that you ran on your local terminal okay and then enter then you have to become root again as it says log out and log back in as root user Right, so let's become root again. S U D O space S U space hyphen. All right, then now now you have to uh, log in as that user, which we, which we created. Okay, so what uh, it, it's, it is saying is become root first, and then you have to switch user using S U command. S U stands for switch user. So S U space dash space the new user that you created earlier on that was GUI user GUI user enter so now you are logged in as GUI user and not root user so this is again one regular user that we created okay then you have to run these commands one by one just copy So what these commands are doing is, okay, it's going to ask for the password. So just remember the password that you chose when you created the user. So use that same password here to authenticate. So what all these commands are doing is enabling this user to uh, access the GUI session on the machine. Copy again. Okay, and then you have to uh, restart the system. 
Let's do this. So it's going to log you out since you restarted the system, then you have to log back in. Okay. So just hit the up arrow key to choose the last command on your local terminal, which was to SSH to this machine and see if the instance is already up. Okay, so I think the instance is still coming up. It hasn't been restarted, so try again. Just hit the up arrow key to choose the last command on the local terminal to enter the machine and hit enter. All right, so I'm logged into the instance now. Then again, you have to become root. Now, if you see the new host name is still, I mean, is coming up. So after I change the host name, it is set to host GUI now, instead of the one, uh, the, the default one given by AWS, okay? So after uh, becoming root, you have to install uh, one more package. That's the, Putty package. Copy and paste, and it's going to install Putty. All right. Now, uh, our EC2 instance should be enabled for GUI. So, it's how you can test it, you have to RDP to the machine. Okay. So, when you log in using uh, CLI, you use SSH, right? secure shell but when you uh, access the GUI session you have to access it via RDP connection okay so what what we're going to do is we're, we're going to try to RDP to the machine okay how we can do that go back to your AWS management console choose the instance and choose its public IP address from here okay so what I'll do is I'll copy this public IP address from here just click on this button here Public ID is the public IP address copied, and then do just type window R on your machine, on your laptop window R and type MSTSC. It's the shortcut for RDP connection. Okay, MSTSC. Hit enter, and it's going to give you the prompt. So just copy that public IP address here. Connect. Okay, it's, uh, it's not going to work. Okay, I know why it's not working. So just uh, cancel out of it, minimize the screen. And uh, what you have to do is on your instance here, yeah, just go to security, scroll down, then click on this security group that you see. Okay, I try to open it in a new tab like this. And then choose the security group. You have to add one more rule here because RDP connection works on port 3389. But right now we have only allowed port 22. So that's why that connection wasn't working. So what you have to do is you have to click on click on uh, edit inbound rules. Add rule from custom TCP choose RDP. Okay, and then here you have to just uh, just use the first option that is 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash 0 and then scroll down and click on save rules now try and it should work 
all right we got the uh the connection going and uh, just click on this just uh, choose this option here and click on yes all right so this is the screen where you have to enter your username and password the same user that you created yourself and the same password okay so the name of the user was GUI user and enter the password whatever you have chosen then click OK so here we are we are inside a GUI session on an AWS EC2 instance based out of Ubuntu OS okay and then if you want to uh, explore more you can uh, see what all options are there in in GUI session okay so there are there are many things that you can do you can choose various applications all right guys so this is all about it i hope you liked the video if you do if you did please like share and subscribe like and share my videos and subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends and, and colleagues if it i mean if it can uh, help them as well all right okay so i'm going to end the video now and i'm going to see you in the next one bye